funny motherfuckers here. They like to say what's up, guy. It's our way to say hi. In February, it is good to know a plow guy. It is shaped like a key. Also, where I like to ski. Tell by my belt buckle that I'm most definitely from. What's up, my diggers? It's time for my 1,000 subscriber contest. It has largely to do with, with what's in this box right here. Over the years that, uh, excuse me, I have been detecting, I've saved a lot of really cool relics uh, and coins, trinkets and doodads and thingamajigs, and uh, even got a couple of whoozy what's it's in there. I've never done uh, a first, second, and third place contest before, um, but I think I will this time. Let me go through some of these prizes and lay out uh, first, second, and third place. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get this show started for third prize. Now I tried to make these um, these prize packages are equal in number of prizes and representation of prizes the major difference being um, the quality of the specimens in each package obviously third place is a good representation of the items second place slightly better first place prizes are something pretty special so first is third place we have this 1946 Roosevelt dime, 90% silver. This was the first year of the Roosevelt dime. I don't believe there's a mint mark on it. I actually dug this in my front yard. A 1953S nickel. In, I believe this was a proof nickel, but had ended up gotten circulated and worn a little bit. Um, but it is it's got a stellar shine to it. This is not one that I dug or found. This is courtesy of Jack of All Trades. Um, he had sent me a gift pack in the mail at one point. And uh, thanks a lot, Jack. Here's a second shout out for that. Now, I'm not a coin collector, but I've amassed a large amount of coins doing this. So anyway, I'm sure Jack wouldn't mind me passing this on to someone else who uh, will appreciate and enjoy it. Then this one I did dig and uh, it is a wheat penny 1937. It's in pretty rough shape but this is what we find. A small whoops, uh, brass or bronze 1800s bridle buckle called a D-buckle. This is a button obviously from the early 1800s um, towards the end of the era of what we would call a dandy button. It's just slightly smaller than an actual dandy button, but still a big button. If you want to know why buttons got smaller over the years, I did a video last year about why buttons got smaller. It all has to do with buttonholes. So go check out that video. Apparently buttonholes got smaller, so they had to for they were forced to make smaller buttons. So um, this is a musket ball, fired musket ball. Um, not sure how it got damaged like that, if it was on point of impact. This is more likely a pistol caliber. A smeared lump of lead that I thought was just a lump of lead till I got it home and cleaned it up to reveal that it is actually a three-ringer. It's a shot three-ringer that has seriously hit its target at a very obscure angle. And for those of you who don't know, um, three ringers were fired out of shells. And this is one of the shells that they were fired out of. If you look real close, um, you might have to clean this up a little bit yourself. <clears throat> There's actually an H on the bottom of this. It's a percussion fired. You can see right there's the strike. And this was obviously full of black powder. And... So there you go, that's third prize. 
Here comes second prize. We have a 1945 Mercury Dime. Uh, this is the last year of the Mercury Dime. This one has no mint, but it's in pretty good condition. A no-date Buffalo Nickel that I dug at the um, American Legion Post 4. A wheat penny. This is a 1936 wheat penny that I dug. I can't remember where. Um, it was in the dirt somewhere. This quite ornate buckle. It's most likely pewter. Still has a bit of the material still on it. Whoops. And the iron pin that goes through it. I'm not sure what this went to. Um, but it's very old and quite ornate. This dandy button that is uh, decorated with a I think it's a supposed to be like a sun type pattern. The post is broken, but that just sort of makes it easier to display. That is uh, late 1700s for sure. A slightly larger musket ball. It's so misshapen that it's kind of hard to determine, but it's definitely a musket ball. A slightly better conditioned three ringer that also has hit its target and a shell from um, from what this would have been fired out of. Oops. So obviously this would have been in here and we can pretend that this was the actual shell that fired this however I found them about 20 miles away so that's a pretty good range and I did clean this one up I did electrolysis to it. Uh, they're not, you know, they're not, they don't have a huge monetary value, but um, they are the first cartridge fired rounds we had. Um, the great history on these if you wanted to look it up and learn something. So that's second prize. And now on to first prize, grand prize. This one's got a little bit extra in it, uh, not a lot, but and some better representations of the previous stuff. Here is a 1944 Mercury Dime in really good condition. Um, no mint mark on this either. 90% silver. Next is more silver for first prize. This is a 1943 P mint mark. I, I believe they're 40% silver. I've heard 35% silver, but somewhere in that neighborhood. And you can see the P on the top of the Monticello building right there. It's kind of worn out. A 1944 wheat penny. This was the, 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 the transitional year because the other penny that's in here is a 1943 steel penny. This was a steel planchet that was zinc coated. Um, again, they, they needed the copper for the war. So in 43 and in 43 only, they made pennies out of steel. This will stick to a magnet. These are very hard to find uh, when you're metal detecting. Mostly because they give a crappy signal that you would normally not dig. Um, this particular penny I found my first night in my new house on the garage floor. There's a video on that. If you check back in my videos, I believe it's called My Latest Permission Because I Bought It or something along those lines. This is a early 1800s suspender clip. The suspender belt part the webbing would go through here and get secured with these teeth and this hook would hook through uh, something like a buttonhole on the waistband of your pants but it was at a cellar hole before I was digging with stealth diggers I believe this was up off of the Massabesic cellar hole that I go to this beautiful dandy button probably the most decorated 
dandy button I've ever dug. Now keep in mind that people would buy these or trade for these large dandy buttons and they were either already stamped out with the design on them or they would buy them plain excuse me they would buy them plain and do their own artwork on them okay this one's a little bent and the post is kind of smushed but that right there is late 1700s a large musket ball but this is a colonial I'm not colonial a Civil War era musket ball I'm a little baffled by the shaping of it it's been rounded off this way it's not large enough to be out of a shotgun and it's flattened here so I don't know if this was the beginning of a piece of trench art but it's very unique and very old you can still see the white patina down in there now I put this three ringer in because this is a very very rare caliber of bullet um, you can see where it's starting it, you can see the taper in it here okay so it would have been a larger shell back here and tapered down to a smaller projectile this is what was called a 50-52 okay or a 52-50 again I'm not an expert so I'm not really sure um, this had to have been a misfire I'm guessing that it came out of the gun like this and hit a target for whatever reason it broke where the taper is rather than releasing the projectile and leaving the empty shell casing this was probably the first tapered round um, that we're used to seeing nowadays but from the 1800s I did a lot of research on this and it was it's a very rare find if you find a complete one unfired um, they're worth they're worth like a hundred bucks in this condition it's not obviously worth a hundred bucks nor would I ever sell it for money but I'm putting it in the contest for you to win and again there's also a um, I believe these are from Henry's a Henry's rifle this would have been the 52 caliber three ringer that went in this so imagine this shell okay tapering down to that size like that that's what this bullet would have looked like and that's first prize so there you have it my diggers first second and third prize um, I wanted to do it with these prizes not because I don't want to give away all my coins those will be in later contests like I said I'm not a coin collector I've received coins from all over the world from people I'm subscribed to and that are subscribed to me um, John and Jackie and Dave and, and Liven and Danny um, some amazing coins that I would think that some of you folks would like to enjoy them as much as I have enjoyed them in my collection uh, so some of my duplicates and some of the um, lesser uh, I don't want to say lesser quality because they're all good quality but some lesser examples shall be given away in later contests throughout the winter to keep my channel going but I wanted to do this because I feel this is a, a great representation of not only the stuff that I find on a daily basis when I'm out hunting, but it also is a great historical collection or timeline going all the way back to the beginning of our country's history. Now, as we all know, you know, uh, the first settlers in this country landed at Plymouth Rock, which is right in Massachusetts, which is only, you know, an hour or two away from me. Um, settlers very quickly came north and also south 
and went west. Um, so some of this stuff goes back to the beginning of our time. Before this, it was just the Native American Indians, and it's really difficult in my hobby to find evidence from them, being that most of their tools and or weapons were made out of stones and bones from animals. They didn't really have metal smithing down to a science. The settlers brought that over with them from England. Um, so there it is, the rules for the contest. Okay, You must be a subscriber. That I shouldn't have to reiterate. That should be obvious. Be a subscriber. You must click the like button, the little thumbs up thing on the video. Okay, please do that. Um, and you have to comment down below that you want to be in the contest. Okay, um, I'm going to do a, a random dot org type of drawing, so it, it's it's fair and non biased. Um, but I can tell you that the person who wins third prize, second prize, and first prize, it doesn't matter where you live on this planet, I will ship it to you. It's not that big of a, of a package. Um, I'll ship them anywhere in the world. If you catch me on my poor week, I get paid every other week, so if you catch me on my poor week, you might have to wait a week for me to ship it. It's going to take, I mean, if it's all the way across the globe, it's going to take two weeks to get to you anyway, so um, it'll get to you eventually. And I would appreciate you doing a thank you video when you receive the prize and, you know, tell me what you think of the prizes. I think I uh, selected these very carefully. I'm going to put them in separate baggies so I don't get them all mixed up. But there it is. Thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Swing beep dig. Good luck in the contest. There's more contests to come. I'll be giving away a whole bunch of things. I'm thinking on doing one contest a week uh, throughout, or maybe every other week. I'll see how far I can stretch the prizes uh, throughout this blistery, cold, brutal New Hampshire winter we're going to have here. Thanks again.